Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna unbox and review the new Deco BE65 Pro by TP-Link. This is a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system with a speed rating of BE11000. It is backwards compatible with previous wireless standards. Now I'm gonna do my full on speed test range test with my following Wi-Fi devices. And if you have a Pixel 8 or an 8 Pro like this one, just know that with any Wi-Fi 7 mesh system or router that I've tested, this Pixel 8 or the 8 Pro, well this is the 8 Pro, is unable to connect to MLO, which means it can't connect to more than one band, which means it can't really get those crazy Wi-Fi 7 speeds, unlike these two. And so think of it as a really good Wi-Fi 6E device. And this is true with any mesh system or router, Wi-Fi 7 mesh system or router that I've tested as of now. I don't know if they'll push an update to it. This is a depiction of a mesh system. So two or more devices, in this case three, acting together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. So you have good strong signals no, no matter where you go. And when you're walking throughout your home, it switches automatically to the other uh, Deco device just to ensure you have the best possible coverage. Uh, obviously we have multi-link operation MLO to connect to more than one band at the same time. Seamless AI driven and it does come with home shield included. Uh, this appears to be the size of the BE63. So, okay, that slides out pretty easily, which is really good. Um, the top says move before use. And it looks like the top is a slightly different color, um, but it looks very similar to the BE63 in terms of shape. Now we have a WPS button, we have three ports. We have a 2.5 gigabit port and we have two five gigabit ports. And it's very important to have two of them because if my internet comes in at five gigs, it can actually go out at five gigs. Now my internet speeds just so happen to be five gigabits per second, so I can take full use out of these. We have a USB port, we have the power port, and on the bottom, there's really no mounts or anything like that. Just some vents and we are good to go. Now all three of these are exactly the same. In fact, all three of these are routers, but within the same network, only the main one hooked up to your modem or your ONT, uh, which is kind of like a modem for fiber optic users, is the one that's acting as the router. And this is all done automatically, so you don't need to uh, worry about that or anything like that. The Deco handles all of that uh, automatically. All right, so looking at the power supply, it is 100 to 240 volts. Output is 12 volts at 3.3 amps, which means if you multiply those two numbers, you get power, which is a little over 36 watts of power. And it's the typical TP-Link plug. You, we got three of those uh, power supplies, and uh, we get an Ethernet cable. It is a CAT6 Ethernet cable, which is really good. Okay, so there's that, and we get the the quick setup guide basically uh, and use the deco app i'll show you guys all of that uh, within the review so let's get to testing so it's been about two weeks since i've unboxed this thing i have been using it as my main mesh system and so far so good so no drops something like that i have 70 plus devices and in that time i had a chance to do all my speed tests and range tests which we'll go over uh, i did want to mention i made a separate video on this thing where i actually demo its wireless backhaul speeds so in that video, I basically have my Mac mini and I connect to a wireless backhaul node uh, via ethernet just to show you guys how crazy fast it is even if you connect to it via ethernet to a wireless backhaul node. I'll link that down below because the Wi-Fi numbers don't fully do it justice. But let's start with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And this just so happens to have a five gigabit port. Now, when I do my internet speed test, the highest that I saw was around 4.7 gigabits per second. And that could be that the five gigabits right here is I'm, I'm pretty much like maxing out there. Whereas when I test when I tested it with the Deco BE85 or the BE95, which has 10 gigabit ports, I do actually get to my five gigabit speed. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Now 4.7 to five gigabits is so close to each other that really when you're using it, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference, uh, but just wanted to mention that. Now, Wi-Fi devices are a different story. They're obviously not quite as fast as the ethernet connected devices, but still getting absurdly fast speeds, especially with a Wi-Fi 7 device. 3.3 gigabits per second download is absurd for a phone uh, over Wi-Fi. That is just absurd for an internet speed test. Uh, upload wasn't as fast, but still getting absurd speeds. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E, not quite as fast as Wi-Fi 7, uh, which makes sense because it doesn't, uh, it's not using MLO, uh, but still getting some solid speeds. All right, so now, 
To truly test out this mesh system, I do need to do a local speed test server where I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and for the, for the wired and wireless backhaul testing, I go from Wi-Fi router to the secondary one which then jumps to the primary one which, which then goes to the server. These speeds are typically better. For the single router configuration, I basically got uh, 3296 down, uh, so actually it was a tad bit slower um, then the internet speed test, which was a little bit surprising, uh, but just around the same speeds basically. Uh, but the upload was a huge difference. So 3.1 gigabits per second upload, ridiculously fast. Uh, Wi-Fi 60 did better uh, versus the internet speed test. So 1.6, almost 1.7 down for the upload. Uh, and the wired backhaul pretty much got very similar numbers. In fact, the white on the other one, I got a little bit faster. Um, for the download and a little bit slower for the upload, but basically the same numbers um, in a nutshell uh, when you're comparing it from these higher speeds. Wireless backhaul wasn't as fast, but still absurdly fast. Uh, and the crazy thing is, this is what I was mentioning with the other video that I did, is when you actually hooked up via Ethernet to a wireless backhaul no numbers, you actually get quite very fast speeds and I actually demo that in the other video. For the range test this will vary drastically by location. It really depends if you have a lot of things that are in the way. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you just have a lot of stuff or there's a lot of trees blocking um, for the outside test, um, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. So at 20 feet away inside my place, uh, hardly a drop for the download speed, but quite a drop for the upload speeds. At uh, 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside, getting absurdly fast download speeds. Again, upload speeds are dropping. And at 100 feet, uh, still getting some solid numbers uh, where the upload is obviously suffering a lot more at this point. But I mean, the fact that I'm actually across the street and I'm testing this day is still very, very good numbers. Now this mesh system can go further than 100 feet. I just stopped my testing at 100 feet. Now for setup and configuration, use the Deco app. It's available both on iOS and on Android. When you first set it up, it tells you what to connect where through the basic setup process. Basically turn off your modem, remove your router, plug this one in, wait till the light goes on. It basically kind of guides you through that. Uh, and then when you get to the interface, it, it shows up the mesh system. It shows it, how it's connected via wired or wireless backhaul uh, or both. If you have three units and you set it up that way, it tells you, you know, which devices are connected to which node. Um, if you have TP-Link smart home devices, that automatically also pops up. You can automate stuff with that as well. Not something I personally do, but because I do have a lot of TP-Link smart home devices, it does pop up there. Um, you can scan your network with Home Shield. Uh, you do get basic parental controls. You get some filtering and stuff like that. You could set some bedtimes. If you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. Um, so just as a heads up. And then for Wi-Fi name, you could customize that. You can make a separate 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. You can make a separate uh, 6 gigahertz band. Uh, and then you could make a separate MLO. So that's the basic thing. So 2.4 and 5 has one SSID. Uh, the, five, the 6 gigahertz as another SSID, and then you could do MLO, which combines the 5 and 6 gigahertz as a different SSID. Uh, if you wanted to do that, uh, you can make a guest network, you can make an Internet of Things network, and um, then you could set up some other stuff. You could set up VPN, you could do like beamforming to make it a little bit faster, you could do fast roaming. Um, to make it switch a little bit faster. So there is some customization there. Um, not like a whole bunch, but you know, DHCP, all that other basic stuff just comes included. Now, is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. This is a premium mesh system. It can handle internet speeds of up to five gigs, has very good wired and wireless backhaul speeds, has very good range. I mean, overall, it's a fantastic mesh system. It's also kind of future proofing up to a certain point because you do have the latest Wi-Fi 7. It is also backwards compatible with the previous wireless standards. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? Is it worth getting this thing? You know, do you guys have this? Are you considering it? Let me know in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.